Hey, what's your favorite wrong way to play a class? Even though there's no wrong ways, you know, come on, tell us your wrong way in the comments below. <laughs> Barbarian 3, Rogue, Undetermined, but at least one. Dexcon build. You're big, but sneaky tank. They don't rage, they seethe. And yes, we know, you can use sneak attack and rage damage bonus if you focus on strength and attack using strength and a finesse weapon. I do not care. No, that is not the purpose of this build. It is dex based to boost your AC and survivability, as well as your rogue skills. Even then, you're not going to get as big a damage bonus from your plus two, three, four rage bonus as you are with sneak attack from equal levels of rogue instead. I play a rogue that shares loot loves and supports my companions in the party, never screws them over, and is never an asshole to NPCs who aren't assholes themselves. Who are you? Tank Abjuration Wizard. Warlock with no Eldritch Blast. Really gives you an opportunity to pick some cool utility skills and spells. The Heavens subclass is great for it because they get free Sacred Flame and bonus cantrip damage at level 6 to make up for the loss of Eldritch Blast. A Rogue with Mounted Combatant Since your mount is technically an ally within melee range of your opponent, you always get sneak attack while on a horse. I play Gunk! Monk with a gun. Ranged Monk is like 90% a suboptimal build. But what about Flurry of Blows and Stunning Strike? Heh, <laughs> what about them? What about 50 feet of movement and 3 shots from a hunting rifle per turn with Mobile and Gunner at level 5? VH, CL, or any race plus a starting feat. No disadvantage on ranged attacks in melee. No action economy wasted to reload. No opportunity attacks against anyone you've attacked, whether you hit or not. Just run and gun. This is campaign dependent and 100% needs DM buy-in, but starting with mobile, you're already a menace on the battlefield. By level 4, if there's a way to get yourself a firearm and roleplay some training in them, you pick up Gunner. From that point, the rest of the ASIs can go into bumping your decks, whiz and con, in my opinion. Strength Rogue. A big, beefy thug instead of the stealthy, sneaky rogue. They are still great at fighting, and thanks to expertise, they can still do the classic rogue things like picking locks or pockets. And you can still sneak attack using strength with a finesse weapon. I found it really fun. Dex focused insane dancing barbarian. Now she believes that she hears music when combat is about to break out and gives in to the rhythm. Consequently, she almost is always the one to start any fights and tends to start humming and swaying along to the music that no one else ever hears before she attacks. Now my DM has actually started letting the bard hear some of her music on occasion, which his player thinks is INCREDIBLY CREEPY! But, since the other party members never hear anything and the warlock can't detect any magical effects around us when we hear it, they think I'm just weird. <laughs> and that the bard is playing along with me cause he's a bit of an ass. I play a strength-based swords bard with a spear and polearm master. I love you already. No combat spells, just blade flourishes. All spells are utility, and they are used generously. I love the feeling of casting detect magic, locate object, or sending outside of combat without worrying about, what if combat breaks out? Does a melee ranger count? Again, I love this person already. I really loved how Pathfinder in older editions handled multiple offhand attacks with rogues, getting like five or so hits in a single round, all with sneak attack damage if you lined it up right. 
5th edition rogue only applying sneak attack once basically killed that dream playstyle, sadly. Ranger, on the other hand, being able to pick up two weapon fighting style, getting an extra attack, and being able to apply Hunter's Mark damage on each hit somewhat filled that void though. Bonus, by the way, I get some fun utility spells like Pass Without Trace to feed my old rogue sneaky tendencies. Healer Rogue. Take all the right feats and skills, use your versatility in combat to effectively stabilize characters and administer health potions. College of Spirits Bard. He's a surly gravedigger who looted a cursed tarot deck and is now plagued or blessed by the spirits housed in the cards. He doesn't dance, sing, or try to seduce anything. <laughs> Love a good bare knuckle boxer monk. All that hooey about meditating? Nah, give me a whiskey. Now you can keep the bald head, but add a handlebar mustache. Trade the robes for a dirty undershirt and suspenders. I suppose this is more of a flavor example rather than a rules example. A ranged paladin is surprisingly powerful if you have another frontliner and a couple of casters. Either let the Moon Druid, Barbarian, or even the Caster's Summons handle the tanking, while you hang out in the back ranks next to the Caster's, where your aura of protection, plus magic resistance if you go Ancients, makes them hard to kill and basically guarantees they never lose concentration. Grab a bow and the Sharpshooter feat to keep the damage up. Maybe dip into Fighter for Archery fighting style and spend your spell slots on healing, buffs, and battlefield control spells, which tend to do more than the 10 or so damage a smite gives you. High dexterity adds to your saves and skills better than strength, and you never have to worry about not being able to get into range or having your movement restricted. You're better positioned to rescue allies that go down, and using fine steeds lets you 1v1 any monster that doesn't have ranged attacks by strafing them. Wrestler Bard. Max strength with moderate charisma. College of Swords for bonus damage and punting foes. Tavern Brawler feat for bonus action grapple. Expertise on athletics for better grapples. Gladiator background, baby. You're basically a professional wrestler. Now I pretty much only use spell slots for Wall of Fire just to kick foes through. <laughs> or the occasional silence to pin a caster in. Fair enough. A dexterity tank paladin. No heavy armor, just a small shield and a rapier. High dexterity and shield master with decent con become untouchable and smite when the opportunity arises. Be an annoying gnat wielding a bazooka. Another unconventional character I like to play is not defined by their ability scores, but by their alignment. I have played a lawful good rogue on occasion. They don't steal or fight dirty. They are more like a vigilante, think Zorro or Batman. With cunning and stealth, they keep the peace and help the local guardsmen stop criminal activity. Warlocks who aren't edgy or dark and didn't sell their souls to get their powers. My current warlock simply made a pact with his adoptive father, an archfey in the Fey Wild, so that his powers could keep him safe as he explores the material plane. A shifter warlock that can use a combination of armor of Agathus and lightning lure to deliberately trigger attacks of opportunity and have enough HP to survive. Especially long tooth shifters can make a lot of attacks with this build. Baseball fighter. <laughs> Step one. Play the Hadar Elf and take the Magic Stone's cantrip. Or if your DM doesn't allow that, take the Variant Human and get the Magic Innate Artificer feat to also get Cure Wounds. Step 2. Pick Fighter and take the Throne Weapon Fighting Style. Invest in Intelligence and Strength. Step 3. Enjoy throwing random rocks baseballs, at people for 1d6 plus 2 plus your spellcasting modifier. Step 4. Pick up a quarterstaff and use that as a baseball bat. Step 5. 
Take the Battlemaster subclass and have your maneuvers represent your different pitching and batting styles. Step 6. Take the evasive footwork, pushing attack, and quick toss maneuvers. Step 7. Take the crusher feat to enjoy watching enemies get knocked all over the place from pushing attack plus crusher using thrown baseballs. Does this eat up your bonus action every fourth baseball? Well, yes, but at lower levels, that is not as much of a worry. This is extremely flavorful, but damn is it fun! Oh, I'm a huge fan of full spellcasting rangers. God, I love these people! I have a character who is very in touch with the Wilds and is training to be a druid, but is still early on in her training, since becoming a druid is supposed to take decades. I use pearls of power, a ring of spell storing, and domain spells from Fey Walker to get around limited spell slots, and focus on healing and crowd control through plant-themed spells. Think Okami or Ori and the Blind Forest. The amount of times people have said, So Shane's a druid, right? Always makes me smile. I also have a fighter who is effectively a paladin of a weakened god. The god's lack of power limits the amount of holy magic she can use, but she is still very much bound to her tenants and paths like a traditional paladin. She's a war goddess focusing on using every weapon imaginable, so lots of weapon swapping mid-combat. She has the magic initiate, cleric feat, to access Shield of Faith, flavored as ring of swirling spectral weapons guarding her, and sword burst, effectively identical to the cleric's word of radiance. I also flavor her action surges as spectral afterimages of her attacks, as if someone else is attacking alongside her. She's like a paladin light. We were playing the Witchlight campaign, and I really wanted to play an Inquisitor, a religious fanatic skilled in reading people and pulling out clues from the environment. Someone who might pull themselves through the Fey Wild purely by their reasoning and devotion to their faith. I thought that the best class for that would be a paladin or a cleric, but lo and behold, neither class really had a solid build for that. So I ended up playing as a rogue inquisitive, which fit what I wanted perfectly. I became a super sleuth, regularly getting 20 plus on insight and investigation roles. I took alert so I could never be surprised. Now, the absolute kicker here was that my stealth was pretty mediocre. Just plus two compared to plus five for our ranger. So I became a religious fanatic aimed at eliminating all evil who was really good at detective work, but really terrible at sneaking. Basically, the opposite of your garden variety rogue. Horny but nerdy, socially awkward, chaotic good bard. She has a sky-high charisma score and is a genius musician, but she cannot talk to or bluff her way out of a shoplifting fine for a thievery she didn't commit. She's not proficient at any of the typical talky skills and leaves most negotiations to the respectable religious figure of the party, or otherwise the most socially respectable member. <laughs> Paylor, help us all if it's her, because she's rolling on charisma alone. I love her. She desperately wants to be the trope of the horny musician who sleeps with every barmaid, princess, lady, swashbuckler, duchess, orc, shamaness, lady, knight, dragoness, and queen in the realms. But she's so socially awkward. She's still a virgin because she hasn't even worked up the courage to hire a prostitute. Obviously, she's too good-natured to use enchantment spells to get laid. She writes down music in a spell book and casts spells with verbal, material, and somatic components like a wizard, except her verbal components are snippets of songs or wordless tunes. She has a high secondary intelligence score and is proficient in traditional wizarding skills. She likes to hang out with wizards and talk shop with them, which they inevitably find frustrating because what she does should not work by Mistra. However, she always gets useful tips out of it. She doesn't own a musical instrument, or if she does, she left it at home. <laughs> she sings or borrows others' instruments to play in taverns. I love this character to pieces. 
Hey, everybody. Brian Von VA checking in after the vid. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, ring that bell, and of course, what's your favorite wrong way to play a class? Leave it in the comments below. And if you want to help us keep the furnaces running and all the fluids pumping, please join our membership. You don't have to, but if you do, we would be eternally grateful. You do get early access to the videos and maybe some more content later. We love you all. Be safe. Be happy. See you next time.